Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that or not, but that cooling fan's none too happy. So we actually have a piece of broken tech to repair. And just like that, it's fixed. I think I'm gonna have to tear it apart and replace that cooling fan. Pretty sure I got a couple of them in stock. Before we get too much farther, I feel like I should mention that as of the date of this recording, this thing is four months shy of being exactly 10 years old. I have owned it for just over four years, and in those four years, this thing has been powered up almost 24 hours a day, every single day. This failure is not to blame on it at all. It has been a trooper. I don't think anybody would have expected anyone to use one of these as hard as I have for the time that I have without no trouble whatsoever. And another reason I'm not too upset about it is right now this thing is thermal pasted with IC Diamond. This stuff, in fact, literally this exact tube is the tube I used to do it. So this tube is just over four years old. And I found this with other tubes of IC Diamond I've had around is that once they get old, they're no longer thermal paste. And I'm just pushing that as hard as I can. And that stuff is basically like solid rubber. So it's not even paste anymore. So this is a good opportunity to get all that crap out of there and get some hopefully better quality paste in. A year or two ago when I bought this, this was supposed to be like one of the best things you could get. The list of best thing you can get changes all the time. So I don't know if this is the super good stuff anymore or not, but this is what I'm using today. I hope. Meaning I hope I have enough and I hope this also is not garbage. And I do have another heat sink and fan in stock for the NVIDIA chipset and everything else that's in this thing. However, if I wanted to, I could just take a couple screws out and just replace the fan. But then what am I going to do with a heat sink with a bad fan? If you are doing yours for some reason, if you find yourself doing yours, you can buy just the fans on eBay. I've seen them being listed as new, which I would not trust that they actually are, for anywhere from $10 to $15 in right this second's listings. And just a couple screws and you can just replace that fan, plug it right out of there. I'm just going to do the whole thing because I have one. One of the reasons I really like these E6410s is because they are so ridiculously easy to service. First thing we're going to do is pop the battery. Just push our tabs together. Battery will pluck out of there eventually. There we go. One Phillips head screw right in the middle, which is captive. That means it stays with this cover. Pop the case back a little bit. Just pick this guy up. It's got little hooks it'll come off of and off she comes. There's our fender. Getting it out of there is no big deal. There's a wire harness connection right here. And I'm gonna hope I can just grab this sides of the connector and just pull it out of there. Just like so. Then there are four Phillips head screws right around the processor. This guy should just pluck out of there. One thing I am a little worried about is I know that there's like a thermal pad over here at the chipset. And I see my replacement heatsink does not have one. So I may have to order one of those. I think those are all out. Give it a little pop free action. Mm, maybe not. Those all feel loose. There we go. Now she's coming. Plenty of dust and crap built up on that. There's our thermal paste and it is rock hard, just like the stuff in the tube. I doubt that was really transferring heat the way it was intended to anymore. So happy to do it. And there's the thermal pad I was saying this guy doesn't have. I think I'm just gonna lay it on there and see how it looks. You can see the old thermal paste back there. That almost looks like it hasn't even been disturbed. Like I'm not even sure if when I put it on there, it was adequately smashed down. So I'm gonna tinker around with this for a while. It's gonna take me a hot minute to get all this stuff cleaned up. And then I'll make a determination of what I'm gonna do back here. And to clean this stuff up, I usually just like to use a Q-tip and some paper towels and stuff like that with just regular old isopropyl alcohol. So this stuff, normally I would buy the highest percentage I could get, like 90% is usually pretty easy to find. But during 2020, 2021 times, isopropyl alcohol was hard to find for a while. So 70% was the best I could do. I'm just gonna take a few hot minutes to clean all this crap up. Now that I've got everything mostly cleaned off, I'm realizing I told you guys something that was wrong. That is a chipset chip. So every E6410 will have that. That is the NVIDIA graphics chip. So not every E6410 will have that one. And my intended replacement heatsink does not. There's the original one with the pad on it. So I am gonna be moving the fan over and cleaning that one up. Something that's a little bit funny. So I think you'll be able to see our fitment on the heatsink right here. It's so good on the graphics chipset that it actually left an impression of the text that they laser etch on the top of the chip in the thermal paste. So that's awesome. This little goofy pad over here, I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. 
I don't have any reason to believe they had a chipset heat problem. That said, getting all that old nasty icy diamond out of here has been a nightmare. And although I don't have to do it, I am going to get all the rest of it around these resistors or whatever those are. I'm going to clean all that up because I just wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't do it. One handy tool to do that to get in those tight places is just take a regular Q-tip and take a pair of side cuts and just cut it at a bias. And that little nubbins is just great for getting down in and scraping those fine areas. And these stalks on Q-tips are just compressed paper, so they're not really going to hurt anything as long as you don't start like digging at things. Just use it back and forth as just kind of a mild abrasive. I'm going to continue to get this cleaned up. I'm going to get this guy cleaned up and then we'll join back up. So I've got everything about as clean as I'm going to. I spent way too much time just digging all the stuff out around that thing. Got my heat sink reasonably well cleaned up. Looks like there's a thermal pad on it for the NVIDIA chipset as well. Seems like it's in fine condition. As we saw a moment ago, we were having great contact and everything, so I'm not going to sweat that. I'm just going to repaste it. So the next thing to do is take our problem child fan off and replace it with one that's hopefully less of a problem child. And the fans themselves are both the same Dell part number. And for your reference, that part number is yeah, 04H1RR. And finally, we are down to what should be the easy part, which is to take this fan off and throw it in the trash. Just kind of picks up off there like so. You might be able to see the problem we're having here. I can actually move this fan blade in and out on its hub. It's a little difficult to show, but that whole fan is moving in and out. And that's the grinding we heard. Is this thing, when it's in operation, that fan would drop and start grinding. So this thing's just done. So now we just take the screws out of our replacement. I find it odd they're different colors. I also noticed it had this kind of funky looking sticker. I almost wonder if this has been replaced already, which would be cool. And just for fun, I'm just going to kind of check this one for play. And there's basically none. I don't want to start prying at it because then it will have play, but there's basically none. Just time to get our new guy in that guy. No point hanging on to that. While I've got the fan out, I think I'm going to go blow that out with some compressed air quick just to get her extra clean. I don't think I made much difference, but I tried. Next thing to do is get our fan in our bracket. And it kind of wants to go in at an angle like so. And I also want to try and keep this tape out of the way. I almost wonder if maybe I should put a little bit of new electrical tape on there or something. Got her in there like so. I'm going to use the black screws because those are the screws that came out of this one. My hole's approximately lined up. I'm going to turn the screw backward until I feel it drop in. The hole's not wanting to line up real well for me, so I'm going to try and get it started in the other one. Same story. Just turn it backward until I feel it drop down. Like that. Thread it in. The way you know you're not going to cross thread it. And these don't need to be super tight. Just snug. There, I felt it drop in. Feels a little wrong, though. It just is what it is. There we go. Fan is in there nicely. Our tape is not obstructing anything. So cool. Next move now is just to repaste the laptop and put it back in. Hoping I have enough of this left and that this is also not garbage. I'm going to try and use just a little bit less than I did apparently the last time. I had plenty on it. And this stuff does still seem good. It's about a year and a half old. And some people will kind of spread this out. I kind of just go with the dollop method. It looks like I've got more than enough paste to do another one if I need to. Now the only remotely tricky part is I like to try and get the heat sink all lined up so I can get it down in one shot and not kind of smear the thermal paste around. I want it to kind of compress on its own. Feels like something's holding it up. So, so much for the one shot approach. There we go. That's better. Tighten our screws up. They don't need to be super duper tight. Just like everything else. I would say snug plus a little bit is plenty for these. Last but not least, do not forget to plug your fan in. I have done that several times before, and uh, they don't think it's too funny. I'm going to once again go for my pair of pliers just to help me, or hopefully help me. Tweezers may be a better option. Plugging it in the right way would also be helpful. I've already had to fight with these enough, but that I've actually taken the fan back out of the heat sink to be able to plug this thing in and then reinstall the fan. Neat. Just broke a wire off of it. That one right there. So, that's not going to work. So it looks like I am going to be installing the fan separate of the heat sink. Because I just trashed this fan. Good news is I've got another fan. Enter the third fan of the video. This is the same part number. And this one I am going to plug in first. Looks like it wants to go like so. 
And actually, just because I don't want to risk destroying this one, I need to get a better view of what I'm doing. So when you come back, that'll be plugged in. She's plugged in. Just going to carefully snake it down in there like so. Get our screws back in it, which is no different than it was 30 seconds ago. And we're done. I think I may have forgot to mention, I did check this fan for play because it's also used and it was fine. Let's tuck our wire back down. Hopefully that doesn't break off. Good to go. Now we just need to take our back and put back on it. There are little hooks along this thing. And there are little windows those hooks engage into. You just gotta kind of put it on there and futz with it a little bit. Sometimes it helps to take a screw and just pull it up some. I'm all pushed in. And when you get them all aligned, you'll know because this panel will fit flat. Sometimes you'll miss one, it'll kind of stick out at the front. I think that's about right. Put our battery back in, see if sparks come shooting out. No immediate sparks. Powered on, no sparks, and I can feel the fan running. And I can also hear it running. And I observed all the hardware temperatures briefly just to make sure they looked right, and they do. If something's screwed up and the fan isn't running, these things will shut down in under a minute normally, so we should be good to go. Ah, as always, it's the five minute job that ends up taking forever. But if your fan's making noise, this really isn't that big of a deal. If you're not worried about the thermal paste, it's two screws, one connector, in, out, you go, five minute job. I went the two hour route because I was worried about that thermal paste I put in it because I knew it was kind of crappy. So far, I think the Cryonaut is going to end up being my go-to. So far, so good on this stuff. I'll keep you posted as the future progresses. But anyway, that is the end of this video. As always, guys, I appreciate you stopping in. I'll catch you on the next one.